For all of you taking the computer-based civil engineering exam, pay attention, this one's for you. I did my first example problem using the civil PE reference manual, and I've already found some discrepancies which I'm not thrilled about. Let's get in, let's take a look. And let's solve a problem along the way. We have a little bit of a formwork question here today. First off, we have a live load specified of 50 PSF. Uh, joists are single span, as they denote joists here, um, and they're simply supported, and they are supported by the stringers, which we see right here. Um, and the stringers are two span continuous beams, and in parentheses, I think this is the big kicker here, must be considered uh, continuous. Neglecting the self-weight of the formwork, the load in pounds on shoring B2 is most nearly what? So um, the shore is going to be one of these panel legs, kind of one of the posts or columns that's holding up everything. And they give us grids, so 2 and B, which actually tracks down to this shore right here, the red dot that I made. First, let's obtain our force. We have a live load equal to 50 PSF, as stated. And then we have a dead load that they didn't talk about, but they did give graphically right here. A six inch thick reinforced concrete slab. They give the unit weight of the concrete 150 pounds per cubic foot. That is typical for concrete. Um, so we want to determine that. Well, if that's simply the thickness of the concrete multiplied by the unit weight of the concrete, which in our case is 150 PCF. That spits out a PSF, which is what we want to use in conjunction with our live load. That gets us a total of 75 PSF. For this problem, I don't see anything about load cases or LRFD or ASD or anything like that. So let's just keep everything simple and um, let's not put factors on anything. Um, that could be up for debate. I know that sometimes can be tricky, but in this case, they do give a dead load and live load, but for shoring, it's usually um, either allowable load, so ASD, or just completely unfactored. And since you have a dead load and a live load in ASD, that's just 1.0 and 1.0 for the load case. So I'm gonna use that, let's go through it and let's see what happens. Maybe we go back and we slap on factors for LRFD and see if any of the answers line up. But for now, we're doing ASD. So our load case, is 1.0 dead plus 1.0 live. That gets us 50 plus 75, which is 125 PSF for a combined load. Next, we want to determine our load path and do an appropriate load distribution to our uh, supporting column at intersection B2. Now, uh, the first thing is that they say we have joists, but they don't give us any real spacing of the joists. And visually, you can see I go green here, that there's like a ton of them along here that span that way from stringer to stringer. Um, so there's no real need to determine what the loading is on each one of those stringers. We can just uh, take the uh, area that is being supported by a single stringer and then determine a line load on that stringer and then go from there. So we'll go in red here. And we know that stringers are spaced at three feet on center based on this information up here. I'll try to do it graphically here. And we know that it's supporting three feet and three feet to the next adjacent stringer on each side. But since, this, uh, since the joists are simply supported, that means that half of this distance and half of this distance will get you the tributary width that is uh, being supported by this stringer. That means we have a total trib width of three feet being supported by that stringer. And we know that we have a load of 125 PSF. Now we can determine the line load on that stringer, which we will denote as W. W is gonna equal three feet times 125 PSF. That will get you PLF, which you know, unit-wise, that's what you're looking for for a line load. 375 PLF. There's our stringer, and I've drawn in blue the reaction at the post at the intersection of grids B2, which would be that middle support of the continuous uh, span of the stringer. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, we can now do the same thing we did um, to determine the tributary width and loading on our stringer to begin with, and just take half of five feet and half of five feet and call it a day. Not exactly. If they were sim simply supported, then you could do that. But this is a continuous span. So you would have to do statics 
um, and use your equilibrium equations to check and find out that actually that reaction RB2 is uh, not just simply taking uh, half of the width of each side. Um, a way that you can speed this up is that we're going to jump into the PE reference manual that they give you to go to our shear moment and deflection diagrams to pull an equation that will give us that reaction for this type of loading condition. Here it is, a visual front cover for all of you who are new to it. This is brand new. This is where you'll find yourself. This is in chapter four, the structural section, so that's good. Well, this is something interesting. I just looked through the shear moment diagrams and actually there were no locations where they gave you a continuous two equal span beam with a uniform load all the way across it. Um, they have that in the steel manual. For some reason it's not in here, so that's kind of a stinker. Um, but one way I can help us get around this is the following. Head over to the beloved, you guessed it, AISC steel manual and go to your shear and moment uh, and deflection diagrams that way. That's uh, for me the maroon is table 3-22 and you'll go there and you'll see that they do have a condition where there is two spans equal distant and they have a uniformly distributed load all the way across. From that we'll get the equation of uh, the midpoint reaction of 5W L over 8 and L being the full span uh, of both spans added together. So we have two five foot spans which would then equate to an L equaling 10 feet. All right, let's go write all that down. Reaction B2 would be equal to 5WL over 8. 2,344, we'll round up just a hair, pounds. That gives us an answer, we'll go green, I would say of C, that's spot on. Now, very quickly before you head off, let's just make sure it wasn't LRFD by chance, if we get LRFD and we get an answer that's also available, uh, then you kind of got to guess a little bit. Um, but let's scroll down here. So the only thing that would change, we'll go green, is load case LRFD, which would be 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live, which would get us 170 PSF. 170 times a trib of three gets us 510 PLF and then a reaction 3187.5 pounds. And as you can see up above here, there's nothing in our given solutions that, that pertains to that. So thankfully we didn't have to guess. Um, I'm hoping that they never do that because that would be kind of crappy. You did all the work, you did it correctly, but um, you know, it wasn't clear as to which way you wanted to do it. When they do want you to use a load case, I would say most of the time, they are very clear in their wording as to wanting you to use it or not. So don't sweat that part too much. Um, one thing to take away from this is that the reference manual doesn't have everything so far, in my opinion, that I would want taking the exam. So that kind of stinks a little bit. I don't know why they took almost all of the conditions and put it into the PE civil uh, reference manual, but left apparently a few out that are in the steel manual. Now, the steel manual, although you can't bring in your own version, they are providing you the electronic version of that. You will have access to it. It's just not your own personal, you know, Bible that you're gonna be walking in with and being like, oh, oh, I want that desk. Oh, I'm gonna sit at that desk to pass the PE exam. It's not gonna be like that, so. Um, but today, that wasn't available to us in the reference manual. Start to pick up on those little things. Uh, if you like today's content, give it a like. If you're feeling some nerves about this new reference manual, leave it in the comments down below. Let's get a conversation going with everybody here in the auditorium. And we're on a journey in 2022 to reach more engineers than we ever have before. So if you're teetering, if you're new and you're liking what you see here, subscribe to the channel, join the team, grow with us, become a part of Team Kestova. We want every single one of you here so that we can grow together and collaborate together. This is Rich with Team Kestova and I will see everybody next time. Later.